Welcome to the August 2013 Dallas Camera Club Projected Competition. Our theme this month is Candid Photo, described as a photograph where the subjects are acting naturally or spontaneously without being posed and seem unaware of the photographer. Our judge for this month is Mark Good. Mark Good is an amateur photographer who has been clicking the shutter for nearly 50 years. From his first experiences with a Kodak Instamatic to his love affair with his Leica, Mark enjoys capturing moments that speak to the heart. He is most comfortable shooting with film cameras and prefers black and white because it helps the viewer focus on what is most important in the image. It is Mark's opinion that because black and white images are one step removed from reality, by subtracting color, the photographer is able to more clearly present a subject in context and focus with the viewer's attention on what is most important in that moment. Mark offered the following general comments about candid photography after viewing this month's entries. Crop for your subject. Get closer either with your feet, a zoom lens, or in post-processing. Resist the temptation to capture all that you see. Make sure to eliminate distracting elements so that what matters in the image really pops. Beginners Projected Senior Loses Playoffs by David Stiff A good moment is captured. Crop tighter to the subject. While this is a good moment, the viewer cannot easily see the pained expression on the face of the football player. His eyes are obscured. 8 points Glassmakers by Denny Farmer. An unusual subject makes this interesting. The left hand of the top glassmaker obscures his face. This is distracting. However, if the image was cropped to focus on the glassmaker to the lower right, so that you saw only his face, arms, hands, and the hot glass, it would be a much better image. Eight points. In Sync by Jackie Carver. There is some symmetry here, which makes it interesting. If you get lower to the ground and take this image from a dog's perspective, then this image would be more unusual and perhaps more interesting. Additionally, the image needs to be cropped so that the items in sync, such as the walker's feet, are more apparent. As is, it looks like the photographer missed the moment. Eight points. Watch the birdie by Jim Stump. The expressions on the faces of the subjects are strong. The word photograph means to draw with light. Remember that the most light needs to fall on the area of greatest interest in the image. This is important because that is the area that will draw the eye. Better lighting on the subjects would improve this image. 8 points. Sandy Slide by Michael Farnham Interesting subject, how many people slide on sand? Putting the subject, the slider, in the center of the frame can be boring. Much of the frame does not contribute to the moment. It is wasted background noise. Next time, try positioning yourself at the base of the hill and shooting upward to capture the slider and, if your lens is stopped down enough, the expression on the woman at the top and the dog having fun. The image would have more movement, and the viewer would see the excitement on the faces of the participants. 8 points. Sneak Attack by Penny Clark The face of the dog is interesting, though seeing only one eye is a bit distracting. This image needs a much tighter crop. Next time, try to capture the dog's entire face so the viewer can see the dog's expression. 8 points. LOL by Barbara Briley. A warm and human moment. The person on the left looks like he is catching flies with his open mouth. I can't tell whether he is laughing or talking or fly fishing. If you had captured the moment from the far left of the three on the bench, then the viewer would see the profile of the male with less attention on his open mouth, but a more complete view of the two women's facial and body expressions. It is difficult to translate visually a moment whose real power stems from what's being said or heard. The challenge is to find a facial expression or body expression that is remarkable and then let the viewer fill in the blanks as to what is being said or done. 10 points.
Moving Cautiously by Diane McNabb. An interesting subject. Crop to the face. The real anxiety of the moment is communicated not just through the posture of the tree trimmer, but mainly through the expression on his face and his tight grip on the rope. Next time, zoom to the subject's face and hand. Capture the fear and tension. If you don't have a zoom lens, reposition yourself with the lens you have. Capture, and then zoom in post-processing. 10 points. Contemplation by Chris Kobos A good subject for candid photography. Two things would improve this image. First, it would be better to crop to the subject's face, in other words, dedicate less of the image to the cowboy's entire body and more to his upper body and face. Second, reframe so that the subject's face is on the left side of the frame and the viewer can follow the cowboy's gaze to the right side of the frame. 11 points. Fourth of July Biker by Delise Ann Poglia. Great capture of the subject's face, excellent timing. This image could be improved if the girl's left hand were included in the frame. 11 points. Net Fishing at White Lake by Judy Lindo. This subject is interesting. One problem with this image is that the lack of light on the subject, which is fine with a contrajour image taking a picture in the sun, does not have sufficient contrast with the row of trees in the background. So the potential power of this shot, the silhouette of the fisher, gets lost in the lack of contrast between the body of the fisherman and the row of trees. Next time, try to pay attention to the background when composing. I know this is not easy to do when capturing candids, but still very important. 11 points. California Surfing by Sherry Johnson The expression on the young girl's face is appealing. The photographer should frame the image in the direction of the action. In this case, the subject should be on the left side of the frame. If she was, then the viewer's eyes would follow the gaze of the young girl, thus completing the composition. As it is, the viewer's gaze is truncated by the right-hand side of the frame. 11 points. Sisters by Spencer Parker A loving moment well captured. There is insufficient light on the face of the sister on the left and too much background light. It detracts from the focus of the image. Next time, post-process with a vignette and add more light to the subject's faces. 11 points. Knitting in the Long Corridor by David Reese Appealing Subject if you could shoot this image again, an improved perspective would be gained by shooting from the below the head level of the subject. Get lower and shoot up into the knitter's face. The result would be a stronger image with the knitter's great expression filling the frame, the hands in the foreground, and the viewer would be able to do what we all do naturally, look into the eyes of the subject, in this case, the knitter. 12 points. Brother Helping Sister by Aaron Lesher Excellent composition, moment well captured. I would highlight the brother and sister and then add a vignette to darken the surrounding background. This would bring more focus to the subjects. 12 points and honorable mention. The Color Runner by Shelley Vandergrift The expression on the runner's face is great. A little more defocus or bokeh in the background would be helpful. 13 points and third place. Keep on Truckin' by Evan Simmons. The subject is interesting, his posture very telling, and capturing him mid-stride adds to the story the image seeks to tell. If the photographer could use a faster lens so that only the subject were in focus and the background is out of focus, then the image would have even more impact. 14 points in second place. Kick It by Julie Horak. Excellent moment, great expression on the subject's face, perfectly composed. If the photographer could capture the image at a slower shutter speed to introduce motion blur into the soccer player's kicking foot, 
It would add to the drama of the capture. Very well composed. 15 points and first place. Advanced projected. Looking up. The shoes are interesting. If you encounter a scene like this again, here are some suggestions. First, get down to the ground level, the same as your subject. Second, use a fast lens and focus on the shoes. That way, the balance of the subject's body will be out of focus. Third, frame it so the viewer can see the shooter's head and camera. Seven points. Afternoon soiree. This image would be improved if the photographer had captured the couple so that the viewers could see their faces. Capturing interesting candid moments in public is challenging, particularly when you, the photographer, want to remain unnoticed. Work on being invisible and, if possible, using a longer focal length. Seven points. Sneaky Candid Photographer Busted by Bob Krauss. The expression of the two women on the right is strong. Crop to your subject. Use a square crop and isolate the two women on the right. Then the viewer is presented with only two women, both glaring at the photographer. That image would be jarring and captivating. As it is now, the other two women in the frame contribute nothing to the image. Eight points. Red Dressed Girl by Dave Rocher. The expression on the girl's face is strong, but I can't see the girl's face very well. That is what is so interesting here. Next time, get down low and shoot up into her face. I want to see her eyes, to feel her emotion, which seems to be exhaustion or discouragement. Her hands gripping the cane add value, but without seeing her eyes, I can't really tell what's going on. I can't connect with the subject. Eight points. Smile at Me by Jerry Martin. The expression on the couple's faces is good, but there's insufficient contrast between the body of the photographer and the tree she's bracing herself on. Thus my eye follows the line of the photographer's left leg up and above her head to the tree she's leaning against. Very confusing. Remember, the viewer's eyes are drawn to two elements in a picture, the area of the greatest light and the areas of sharpest focus. This image has two subjects, the photographer and the subjects, but they are not evenly lit, so the viewer sees first and foremost the wedding couple, and the photographer is lost in the darkness. Eight points. Wedding Crashers by John Fowler. The expression on the bride's face is great. The bride's face is the only thing of interest in this image. Everything else is irrelevant. Equally unsettling is that I can't tell what the bride is smirking at. Is it the older woman to the right of the frame or someone outside of the frame? Because I can't connect her expression with a cause, all that should be shown is her face, because nothing else in the frame adds value. Eight points. Filling Their Rice Bowls by Mel Sharp. The subject and the colors are brilliant. This image's greatest weakness is that the rice distributor's arm obscures the face of the subject. We're drawn to the people's faces, and when they are obscured in a manner that doesn't contribute to the image, then the image loses its power. Next time, watch the movement of the subject's arms and wait for the moment when the arm is raised but not obscuring the face. Eight points. Romantic moment at the Dallas Arboretum by Virginia Sumrall. The interaction between the man and the statue is good, but the photographer captured the wrong moment. The man's hand is in the way. It is a distraction. A few seconds before or after, when his hand is out of the way, would improve this image greatly. And, crop to your subject, get closer either with your feet, a lens, or in post-processing. The real items of interest here are the heads of the two persons and the expression on the man's face. Nothing else contributes to these elements. Eight points. I'm Not Walking by Richard Stern. 
I like the warm embrace of the daughter of her mother. The problem with this image is that the girl's hair obscures her face and therefore her expression. The viewer cannot deduce from the image alone what is going on. This is a warm embrace by a young girl needing comfort, an embrace stimulated by fear or what? Only her face can tell us, and regrettably we can't see enough of it. Nine points. Gelato by Waylon Threadgill. Humorous subject. Most people try not to lick their fingers in public. Get closer to the person that is the center of attention. The male companion's presence in the frame adds nothing to the image. In fact, he is a distraction. Nine points. Is my kimono straight? By Steve Havacek. Attractive subjects. If the viewer follows the eyes of the subjects, we are drawn to the girl's hands, but we can't see them clearly. Is the girl in pink holding something? Are they looking at a butterfly, a piece of jewelry, or what? The object of their rapt attention is hidden from view, and because of that, the image loses some power. Next time, move the camera higher so you capture the subject's faces and the object of their attention. 10 points. Lost at the Fair by Betty Johnson. The expression on the young boy's face, the one standing closest to the officer, is great. Get closer to that one. The real area of interest is the young boy's face. Crop to show his face and the head and hands of the officer. A 4 by 3 aspect ratio would work well here. Then the viewer's attention is drawn into the experience. The other boy and the rest of the image don't add much to the moment. 11 points. Thurston Moore by Steve Reeves. The expression on Moore's face is great. I don't think there's much room for improvement here, but unfortunately this image is a bit of a cliché, if only because the expression on Moore's face is so common among concert photographs. I'll bet it was a great concert, though. 12 points and honorable mention. We Got the Beat by Aaron Curry. I like the use of a triptych to convey the moment. I like triptychs, and this one is well captured and presented. My personal preference would be to present this in black and white, but that's because I'm a black and white film bigot. The lighting on the subject's face and hands is superb. Really well done. 14 points and third place. Kickflip by Morris Stein. The perfect capture of a moment of freedom, gravity seems to have been suspended. This is a nitpick, I admit, but if you had a faster lens and could isolate the subject a bit more, blurring the background, it would give an already excellent image a 3D appearance, and then it would totally rock. 14 points in second place. You Can't Make Me by Rachel Cook. The subject, the composition, the use of subject isolation through a fast lens are outstanding. This image was very well seen and captured. Keep doing this. Excellent work. 15 points in first place. Masters Projected Happy Fourth What is the subject of this image? Or who are the subjects? What is the photographer trying to tell me? What is the subject here? This image lacks context and content. Six points. Three hats. The symmetry of the three hats is good. Because the faces are invisible, this image really lacks something essential to capture the viewer's attention. Capturing human form in candid moments can be powerful. But there has to be something unique or distinctive in the form, and that is what this image lacks. 7 points. Man Holding On to the Back of a Truck, Agra, India, by Harry Rumberger. I like the expression on the man's face. Too much is going on in this frame. Too many people and too much color. It needs a tighter crop and muted tones. 
I would prefer a monochrome with a vignette so the main subject's face is well lit, but there is a light fall off in the rest of the frame. 8 points. Family Outing, Red Fort at Agra, India by Janie Remberger. I like the expressions on the people's faces. Pick one subject. Do you want me to look at the mother, the father, the young boy on his father's lap? Crop to that subject, then dodge that subject's face, lighten it, leaving the rest of the frame darker. 8 points. Going Home by Kay Hargis. I feel this image doesn't tell me enough. The title is Going Home, but I can't tell whether the little lad is going home, going to the park, going to find a restroom, or just hitting the links. If he is going home, I want to see home too. 8 points. Cafe Bubbles by Susan Bersiaga The girl blowing bubbles is good. What is your subject here? If it's the girl blowing the bubbles, then crop to that subject. The rest of the frame is way too distracting and contributes nothing to the moment with the young girl. In fact, she's oblivious to the world around her. As the photographer, you want to take me into her world of oblivion. Show me the world the way she's experiencing it. Get closer to your subject with your feet, a lens, or in post-processing. 8 points. Feeding the Gentle Giants by Suzanne Graham The girls feeding the giraffe are interesting. There's way too much going on here. I see girls feeding a giraffe, a parent I suppose, watching in pleasure, and lots of people taking pictures. You need one subject, so pick one, then crop to that subject and show me those wonderful expressions on those little girls' faces. At least, that's the subject I would pick. Candid's work when you are close to the subject. 8 points. Bottle Dancers by Gary Kelly I feel like I'm looking at an image in a travel brochure. There is too much going on in this image. Who or what are your subjects? If you were to crop to the faces of the dancers, you would eliminate enormous distractions. Look at the expression on their faces. The concentration, the focus, and the absolute maniacal commitment to properly positioning their feet. For me, that is the candid moment. The rest is just visual noise. 9 points. The Hulk by Houston Brown. The expression on the green man's face is great. Post process with a vignette so the other people in the frame are much darker. The center of the vignette needs to be the green man's face. That will focus the viewer's attention on the green man and his expression. 9 points. Check Attendance by Kay Hale I like the expressions on the three faces. Tighten the crop. There's too much going on here. The center of attention is the young lady's face in the upper part of the frame. Make that the center of the image with the other two women's faces on either side. Consider converting to monochrome. The red in the frame is overpowering and distracts from the flesh tones of the subjects. 10 points. The Warning by Steve Newman The expression on the player's face is strong. The problem with this image is the viewer can't tell from the umpire's face or body language that he is issuing a warning. In fact, it looks like he's assessing the player's shoes. If the photographer had captured the action a few seconds before, say, when the ump's finger was pointing, or if he had an angry expression on his face, then this image would be powerful. 10 points. Shared Moment by Jay Hoppenstein The expressions on the subject's faces are good. Crop to the subject. Get closer either with your feet, a lens, or with post-processing. The most intriguing aspect of this frame are the girl's expressions. Crop to that. Then add a slight vignette so that their faces glow and the rest of the frame has a smooth light fall off. 11 points. Not Quite at Attention by Ronald Park 
The yawning ROTC member is interesting. Post process of monochrome and add a vignette in which the yawning ROTC member is in the center. The rest of the image will be darker but still visible. His yawn will then pop in the frame. 12 points and honorable mention. Joy by Susan Stageman. The expression on the man's face is strong, but the moment and the expression are problematic for me. The human face can communicate over 700 different emotions, some of them very subtle in their distinctions. Without the title Joy, I wouldn't be able to tell if the subject was expressing pain, sorrow, or joy. Is he happy to see the young child or sad to be leaving him? Is he beginning to laugh or cry? A fraction of a second on either side of this moment might let me, the viewer, answer those questions. Shooting candids requires a careful study of human behavior and the ability to anticipate a decipherable moment. 13 points in third place. Mother and Child by Tina Arms This image captures the clear and unmistakable love of the mother for her child, the only weakness of the image is that we can't clearly see the mother's face. The hint of the smile is powerful, but I want to see her eyes. We connect with our eyes. There is extraordinary tenderness and intimacy in this image, well seen and captured, and I like the muted color tones done in post-processing. 14 points and second place. A Fascinated Child by Bill Nafee The perfect composition and lighting. It is perfection, and exactly what a candid image should be, a priceless moment that gives the viewer insight into the mind, soul, and heart of the subject without any visual distractions. Show me more. This is what candid photography is all about. Congratulations on 15 points and first place.